Mr. President, this business needs a Virginian. Therefore, I propose a replacement, Mr. Thomas Jefferson. No, Mr. Adams, no. Very well, Mr. Adams. Mr. Jefferson will serve. Uh, but I'm going home, too, to uh, my wife. Move to adjourn. Uh, no, wait. Second. Uh, I haven't <laughs> seen her in six months. Moved and seconded. Any objections? Yes, I have objections. Lots of objections. So, Congress stands adjourned. Very well, gentlemen. Let's get on with it. Which of us is going to write our declaration on independence? Mr. Adams, I say you should write it to your legal mind and brilliance we defer. Is that so? Well, if I'm the one to do it, they'll run their quill pens through it. I'm obnoxious and disliked. You know that, sir. Yes, I know. Then I say you should write it, Franklin. Yes, you. Hell no. Yes, you, Dr. Franklin. You. What? You. What? You. What? Mr. Adams. But, Mr. Adams, the things I write are only like extemporanea. I won't put politics on paper, it's a mania. So I refuse to use the pen in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, refuse to use the pen. Mr. Sherman, I say you should write it. You are never controversial, as it were. That is true. Whereas if I'm the one to do it, they'll run their quill pens through it. I'm obnoxious in this life. You know that, sir. Yes, I do. Then I say you should write it, Roger. Yes, you. Good heavens, no. Yes, you, Roger Sherman. You, but. You, but. You, but. Mr. Adams. But, Mr. Adams, I cannot write with any style of proper etiquette. I do not know a participle from a predicate. I am just a simple cobbler from Connecticut. Connecticut, Connecticut, a simple cobbler king. Maybe you should write it. You have many friends and you're a diplomat. Oh, that word. Whereas if I'm the one to do it, they'll run their confidence through it. He's obnoxious and disliked. Do you know that? I haven't heard. And I say you should write it, Robert. Yes, you. Not me, Johnny. Yes, you, Robert Livingston. You. But you. But you. But. Mr. Adams, dear Mr. Adams, I've been presented with a new son by the noble store. So I am going home to celebrate and pop a port with all the living sins together back in old New York. New York, New York, living sins going to pop a Mr. Adams, I beg you, I've not seen my wife these six months. And we solemnly declare we will preserve those liberties, being with one mind resolved to die free men rather than to live slaves. Thomas Jefferson, on the necessity of taking up arms, 1775, magnificent. You write ten times better than any man in Congress, including me. For a man of only 33 years, you possess a happy talent for composition and a remarkable felicity of expression. Now, sir, will you be a patriot or a lover? A lover? <laughs> no. But I burn, Mr. Ray. So do I, Mr. J. You? Yes. You do? John? Who'd have thought it? <laughs> Mr. Jefferson? Dear Mr. Jefferson, I'm only 41, I still have my virility. And I can romp through Cupid's Grove with great agility. But life is more than sexual combustibility. Combustibility, combustibility, combustibility.
Now you're waiting, Mr. J. Who will make me, Mr. A? I. You. Yes. How? By physical force, if necessary. It's your duty, your duty, damn it! Mr. Adams! Damn you, Mr. Adams! You're obnoxious and dislike that cannot be denied. Once again, you stand between me and my lovely bride. Lovely bride! Oh, Mr. Adams, you are driving me to homicide! The choice is yours, Mr. Jefferson. Do as you like with it. We may see murder. 